Hi everybody. This is Dr. Ashik here with you. So today we will be talking a very important topic that is replication of DNA. The model of replication of DNA as everybody knows it is proposed by Watson and Crick and the very famous model it is known as semi conservative mode of replication this mode is experimentally proved by two other scientists who is known as meselson and stall so i am not going to details of these things so we'll be studying that later so these words are very important watson and crick semi conservative model and meselson and stalls experiment for you so i'll be describing in briefly so if this is the dna strand 5 dash 3 dash 3 dash and 5 dash the two complementary strands are there and the new strands will be synthesized with the complement to the other one strand and other strand will be also produced so here there are two strands are there this is one dna strand and it will be having one new strand and on the other side there will be an old strand will be there that's why it is known as semi conservative one old strand and one new strand is there so here we will be going to discuss the detailed mechanism i'll be uh, i'll be wrapping up this discussion only to the ncert level so we'll see that mechanism of replication here the first thing we have to discuss is the enzyme for replication so everybody know that it is creating a new dna from an old dna old dna become new dna since a new dna is formed the enzyme is known as dna polymerase since it is depending upon the old dna will be calling it as dna dependent so the total name for the enzyme will be coming like dna dependent dna polymerase and what happen next we'll see how the replication is growing on so you can see that two old dna is there 3 dash 5 dash 5 dash 3 dash it is there and you know our enzyme who is the enzyme dna dependent dna polymerase is coming here but one problem is that dna dependent dna polymerase cannot start its own it needs a separate region here it is known as origin of replication that is a recognition sequence for that enzyme here that is in short it is known as ori it is present there so that is the second thing the first thing we need a dna dependent dna polymerase second thing is a ori we need and everybody know that the two strands of the dna is linked by bonds what kind of bond is that that is a hydrogen bond hydrogen bond is present there so for replication i'll be telling like in order to carry out our replication we have to break that hydrogen bonds and separate the two strands we have to break that thing so you know that how we can break a bond we can to supply energy we have to supply energy to the hydrogen bond so what will happen the bond will be breaking the strand will be separating so i'll be drawing in bit detail there so we'll be seeing that two strands 3 dash 5 dash 5 dash 3 dash two strands are there you can see it is linked by hydrogen bonds are there i'm drawing six bonds there you can see the six bonds and what i'm going to do i'm going to supply the energy to these bonds these two bonds will be breaking here so what is why because we do not have that much or so much energy to spend to break all the bond here so we will be doing breaking only two or three bonds there so only very small area will be separated here so why because to conserve the energy here so what will happen i'll be drawing that here so i am drawing two bonds are broken here the other bonds will be remain as still and the broken area will be separated you can see that the broken bonds here the separated two strands you can see and this area the blue square area that is the site of replication that is a site of replication and that is known as replication fork that is known as replication fork site of replication is known as replication fork so what will happen the enzyme will be coming enzyme will be recognizing that uh, uh, ori here so you know that some speciality of the enzyme the polymerization or new strand synthesis is occurring only in one direction that is 5 dash to 3 dash 
only 5 dash to 3 dash and that will be the direction of the new strand so i am marking the old strand direction 3 dash 5 dash you can see that the new strand will be in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction only so here you can see it will be starting from here the other one will be starting from here one strand will be going from 5 dash to 3 dash here the other strand will be going from 5, 3 dash to 5, 5 dash to 3 dash here so you can see that and what will happen next that is the question what will happen next so new strands will be i am marking the new strands label like 5 dash to 3 dash 5 dash to 3 dash two new strands are forming and next step is very important that is the fork is going to expand the, the replication fork is going to expand how again energy will be supplied to the remaining bonds i am marking two other bonds that are there so what will happen that bonds will be broken and that replication fork will become some more bigger rep replication fork will be having so i am drawing that bigger replication fork here so you know it will be already having and uh, already having two parts of synthesized DNA. You can see this is 5 dash to 3 dash 1 DNA. The 5 dash to 3 dash newly formed two rose color thing I am drawing here. And here what will happen? You know that enzyme will be continuing from 5 dash to 3 dash. So the template strand will be starting from 3 dash to 5 dash here. So you can see that it will be continuing one side it will be continuing directly on the other side it will be starting from here because on from the other side it cannot continue to the opposite side so it will be coming to this side only so one side it will be going continuously other side or one extra piece will be coming that energy will be supplied to this bonds will be there what will happen same thing the bond will be breaking the replication fork will be again separating here and it will become a bigger re replication fork you know the uh, two strands the parental strands are there and one side there is only one piece here on the other side there are two pieces are already formed there can you see that thing and what will happen again the same thing one piece will be elongating as much and other piece will be forming so the, on one side there will be three pieces will be coming there so i'll be naming that thing so, so this strand what i'm marking here that strand one num number one here one two three strands are forming there so one strand that strand i'll be calling it as a continuously formed strand or continuous strand and on the other side i'll be marking it as a discontinuously formed strand or discontinuous strand is there and it is having another name continuous strand is known as leading strand and discontinuous strand is known as lagging strand two strands are there so that will be that's how that process will be occurring so the question is very important question that is coming from this area is that what is the direction of synthesized strand or that is the direction of dna synthesis you know that will be always you can see that is from the 5 dash to 3 dash here that is from 5 dash to 3 dash 5 dash to 3 dash always it will be synthesized in 5 dash because the enzyme is having its own direction here the second question is that what is the direction of the template strands template means the old strands what is the direction of the old strand you know two old strands are there what are the two old strands one is the leading strand other one is the lagging strand so the leading strand and lagging strand leading strand will be having the opposite direction of that enzyme that will be 3 dash to 5 dash always the leading strand will be having 3 dash to 5 dash and lagging strand will be having the direction 3 uh, 5 dash to 3 dash will be the direction of the lagging strand will be there so this is a figure you know very familiar that is an NCRT figure for you i'll be just telling that what is that is so so you can see that here two strands the blue strands can you see the blue strands there the blue strands are the uh, template strand you know older template strand there and the red strands are the new strands can you see that that is a new strand newly synthesized strands there so that the direction of that new strand one strand is known as three dash to five dash that is known as continuous strand NCRT is marking on other strand it is marking as a discontinuous strand you can see the discontinuously synthesized fragments there that will be joined later here I will be giving you an exercise so you have to solve this thing what is the question so we have to find out uh, the direction of all the four stands here so I'm giving you a replication fork and you have to mark the direction of the all the four stands how will you do that very 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 simple what you have to do you have to look at the direction of the newly formed strand and you know what will be the direction of the newly formed strand it will be always what is the direction 5 dash to 3 dash so i am marking here so this is 5 dash that is 3 dash so that strand is known as continuous strand and this is 5 dash 3 dash 5 dash 3 dash this strand is known as discontinuous strand so if it is 5 dash the other end will be 3 dash so the other end will be 5 dash so if it is 3 dash the other end will be 5 dash and this will be 3 dash so thank you for watching me 
and this is dr ashik with you